everyone, Shannon Scott, downtown Savannah, Georgia, uh, across the street from the Conrad Aiken House, and here we see the historical marker for Conrad Aiken. Uh, busy downtown, lots going on. But Conrad Aiken grew up across the street uh, in the home of these great green shutters. This was the childhood home of Conrad Aiken. His father, Dr. Ford Aiken, the famed physician, and uh, their mother, or his wife, uh, Anna Aiken, in that sense. Um, Conrad Aiken, on February 27, 1901, uh, witnessed the murder-suicide of his own parents in this home. You'll see the balcony up there. That is actually the bedroom of Dr. Ford Aiken and Anna Potter Aiken. And after two and a half years of his father medicating with morphine to kind of drown out the voices and really just dark insanity had set in, um, it was here somewhere below in the back of the house that Conrad Aiken in the uh, bedroom with he and his three siblings awakened to the parents fighting and shy of daybreak, he hears his father bellow out in that room just inside the window there with the balcony. One, two, three, pow! Gunshot rings out in the home, the sound of a body hitting the floor rather hard. A moment or two later, his father bizarrely repeats the count. One, two, three, pow! A second gunshot, body slumping against the floor. Now, there's been some assertion that uh, Conrad Aiken, his father rather, Dr. Ford Aiken, was trying to hang himself, and his wife Anna intercepted and he kind of warned her back with a gun and shot her. Now, not sure if that was ever really proven, but that was one of the theories. But Conrad Aiken, at 11 years of age, climbed the steps to that very room. Amber morning light was just beginning to filter in through the windows, uh, the shutters there, the curtains, and he finds his father slumped over, in a, in, over his mother in a growing pool of blood. Conrad Aiken then did something rather unusual. He grabbed his three youngers in their basic bed outfits and barefoot, they pit patted down these steps you see here, covered with the uh, the ivy, and then they walked across the median here to Colonial Park Cemetery. Now, we're going to make this uh, trek to Colonial Park. This is actually the city's oldest Exxon Cemetery, where uh, myself and my crew will be touring uh, daily in the next couple of weeks. But at one time, this cemetery was overgrown completely with shrubbery and weeds and everything else and really became sort of a playground for children. Um, it was not uncommon for kids here to play inside of these burial vaults that you see. Um, hopefully you can see that. The burial vaults um, that look like beds with their headboards and baseboards, some of them go down as deep, um, some say 20 feet, but it's probably more like the 8 to 10. But when Conrad was a child, those were all open. They had staircases on both sides of them, and you could easily go inside of these looted vaults where there used to be shelves, or they had shelves rather that held caskets. The British largely emptied them. So when you were a kid and you wanted to play war with your friends, this was the place to go. And Conrad took he and his three siblings down inside of one of these burial vaults. Now, in a rare interview with Conrad Aiken, he was asked about that later in life. You know, why would you, why, why would that be your first instinct? Well, his response was something akin to, well, it was kind of like that day we were murdered too. Um, and so, yeah, he'd come here with his nanny as a child. This was a very familiar place. And it's not, un, not surprising that Conrad Aiken uh, has a lot of heavy cemetery and uh, imagery and the scenery of cemeteries throughout his poetic and literary works. But yeah, we could say it all starts here in a sense with uh, the death of his parents and in a way, maybe the death uh, of himself. But yeah, there would be a rebirth. Now, when the sun began to crack across Colonial Park Cemetery in the town of Savannah, and yes, his parents' body is awaiting uh, discovery, let's say by the authorities, down here on the end of um, Oglethorpe Avenue at the corner of Habersham, there's an old police station, and you maybe you can see the edge of it, the red brick there, the orange red brick. These are the old barracks of the 1850s. And according to a sergeant who had just come on duty, he was standing here getting ready for his shift, and he hears tiny pit-patting feet coming up from behind him in the cemetery. And I will go ahead and assume that the sidewalk you see here off to my right probably would have been where Conrad is a young boy. Now bear in mind, 
he left his three siblings inside of the burial vault, uh, is my understanding. But as he is walking up to the policeman, the policeman turns around and sees this child in his sort of, you know, bed gown or nightgown. And the boy is simply saying, Papa has shot Mama. Papa has shot Mama. Now, he doesn't recognize the boy, but he recognizes the name uh, Dr. Aiken or Dr. Ford Aiken. So from the police station here, the sergeant takes the boy's hand. Conrad leads him back to uh, the home, the family home. And as they climb the steps later in court, the police officer talked about taking out a long wooden match and lighting that match. And of course, illuminates the grisly scene uh, of the Aikens dead in the room. And as some of you heard me say earlier today, uh, Conrad Aiken's father was actually charged for murder. A dead man was actually put on trial in Savannah, Georgia. And I don't know how common or uncommon that was to the period. Uh, again, it may have had something to do with settling the family estate. But it was a dramatic trial. Conrad was brought into the court and put on the stand to relive everything. And ultimately, the jury kidnapped Conrad, believing it was too cruel for him to go through. And they refused to give up his whereabouts till the judge kind of set the proceedings aside. And that is when Conrad, of course, is later in life delivered to uh, his home, or rather his grandparents' home inside of uh, Boston. And he is raised by his, his mother's parents. And, you know, goes off to Harvard, becomes the Pulitzer winning prize, or Pulitzer Prize winning poet, writing 50 novels. Uh, but the artist life full circle moment that some of you heard me refer to in the cemetery, Bonaventure, was when he came back to Savannah in 1963, don't quote me, but early 60s, and he buys the house next to his childhood home. And there we see the balcony again uh, from where the murder-suicide took place. But Conrad and his wife, Mary Hoover Aiken, one of the great female painters of the 20th century, very notable painter, uh, they buy this house. And when they made their bedroom, the third floor up there, adjoining the old bedroom, Conrad Aiken said, six inches of brick now separates me from my past. And he believed that there was method to the madness, so to speak, with the opportunity of having the home, etc. And he said late at night as he slept in that bed, uh, really against that room in a sense, uh, not far from where it all started for him, he woke up in a cold sweat, crying, and he would stumble over to his writing desk, which by the way is still in that front window, Conrad Aiken's writing desk in that window uh, with some books of his own. And he said he would write down slipstream consciousness style, everything he'd been dreaming about. And that became his autobiographical novel called you shan't or you shan't, if you prefer that uh, pronunciation. But that is what his Gullah Geechee nursemaid used to say to him when he was a child. She would wag her a finger and say in warning, you shan't, you shan't, you shan't. And really it's all about an eight-year-old boy who finds his parents dead and he is moving through the world by default without parents, meeting these sort of interesting characters that show him a path through life. And Conrad wrote in that book very poignantly, the boy finding his parents dead found himself possessed of them uh, forever and no doubt. Um, but yeah, so part of that peacemaking too with the tragedy uh, was going to Bonaventure with his wife Mary and sitting on uh, their patio chairs having martinis in effect with his parents. And of course, some of you who are watching the earlier video, you heard me or, show, or you saw me present this poem here, which I'm about to uh, sort of recreate again for you guys. Um, just because I think in a ritualistic way, it's appropriate that for a minute it returns to the location. This is Conrad Aiken, 1917, at Harvard. His mother, Mary, uh, Anna, sorry, Anna Potter Aiken, uh, that photograph taken just a few weeks before she was killed. And the poem here uh, is called Music I Heard, which he uh, wrote at Harvard in 1917 as a devotion to his mother. And this is actually signed by Conrad Aiken. It's my version of it. Now, um, it's unlikely this is the, the actual poem that he typed up at Harvard. In fact, the, the typewriter looks like it's a little later. So it may have been done uh, in Connecticut. It may have actually been typed up in that very room. 
uh, which would make it very profound. But uh, the absolute source of it's not known, but um, I would say it's definitely early, mid 20th century. And it is signed by Conrad Aiken. And um, again, you, some of you heard me do this before, but I think in a ritualistic way, uh, it's appropriate that I recite it here on the property connected to so much. Music I heard, music I heard with you was more than music and bread I broke with you was more than bread. Now that I am without you, all is desolate. All that was once so beautiful, us dead. Your hands once touched this table on this silver, and I've seen your fingers hold this glass. These things do not remember you, beloved, and yet your touch upon them will not pass. For it was in my heart you moved among them, and blessed them with your hands and with your eyes, and in my heart they will remember always. They knew you once, O oh beautiful and wise. And that's music I heard by Conrad Aiken. And yes, it was 117 years ago today uh, that the death of Dr. Ford Aiken and Anna Potter Aiken occurred here at um, the address on Oglethorpe, the childhood home of Conrad Aiken. And yes, his later life home here at uh, 230 East Oglethorpe Avenue. Uh, one final little epilogue that I want to share is that T.S. Eliot, his lifetime best friend, his Harvard roommate, and really his counter-operative in the uh, world of writing. Uh, Conrad, who had a very, un a, a sort of a great understanding of the psychic plane, the astral plane, uh, he believed that in this very room, on the hour and the eve of T.S. Eliot's death, that T.S. Eliot actually visited him in his dreams. And this would have been 1965. But Conrad Aiken said he wo awoke, uh, although not really awake, maybe in the uh, traditional sense of awake, that he awoke to find himself on the deck of an old uh, kind of schooner or, you know, antique ship, that there were no sails on the mass and that the ocean around him was completely still, that he was naked in a fetal position between the two main masts of the boat and that he was basically shivering uh, from the cold air around him. And again, there was not a ripple on the water. And suddenly, uh, he awakes actually in the room real time. And no sooner had he had sat up in his bed with tears running down his eyes in a cold sweat, did his maid walk in with a, a telegram. And when he opened that telegram, it, it more or less said, uh, T.S. Eliot or Eliot uh, passed in the night. And he really believed that because they shared as a mutual love the story of the Iliad and the Odyssey, that was like their go-to intellectual conversation. You know, the, the novels were the stories that they really worshipped the most. He felt this was Eliot in an um, astral plane sense, traveling here to Savannah from England to essentially say goodbye to him in his own poetic way before he crossed the stars. But I think at the same time, uh, it was also Eliot uh, saying, yes, we will re-meet again because we are forever brothers. But gang, thanks for joining me here in part two of the video uh, about Conrad Aiken and um, the tragic story of his family uh, 117 years ago today in Savannah, Georgia. But I hope you found that interesting. And uh, thanks for joining me on this little video storytelling adventure. 